C.B. Colby tells the following yarn in his immortal The Weirdest People in the World. He calls it The Ghost with the Flaming Fingers. In the late 1700s, a Scotsman with the very uncaledonian name of Ralph Sunderland emigrated to the rural village of Leeds, New York. Leeds, New York. He didn't come alone, but brought with him an 18-year-old girl as an indentured servant. History doesn't record the young woman's name, and while many people who came to North America as indentured servants later rose to prominence, fate arranged a different kind of notoriety for this unknown lass. For Sunderland was a coarse, vulgar man, prone to fits of rage, which he took out on the poor young woman, and in the end she felt she had no choice but to run away, which proved to be a big mistake. She didn't get far. Sunderland pursued her, riding his huge midnight black stallion, and caught her before she managed to travel a mile. Run away, will ye? Sunderland snarled. I'll teach ye a lesson ye'll not forget. He did. He tied her hands to the horse's tail, then whipping the beast into a frenzy, dragged her home. To use a modern expression, she was dead on arrival. Sunderland's cruelty and abuse of the young woman was well known, so he was put on trial for murder and sentenced to hang. But sentence was suspended. I have heard hanging referred to as a suspended sentence, but this one was deferred in the modern sense of the word. Sunderland was reprieved until he reached, if he reached, the ripe old age of 99 years. Then he would hang. But in the meantime, Sunderland would have to wear a hangman's noose around his neck at all times. And while that might have been inconvenient and uncomfortable, it was probably no worse than having to wear a tie at work. Sunderland seemed to have escaped punishment for his heinous crime. But now his real punishment began. The night after Sunderland received his lenient sentence, she came back. He had been sound asleep when he was awakened by peals of demonic laughter coming from the road in front of his house. Opening the window, he saw her. She was sitting on the rough stone fence that bordered the pike, her dress as soiled and torn, as covered in blood, as it had been the night she had died at his hand. And seeing him at the window, she raised her hands to him, and from the end of each finger radiated a jet of bluish-white flame. Sunderland slammed the window shut and drew the curtains tight, but he didn't sleep a wink that night. Yet Sunderland was a hard man, and he did his best to ignore her, although her demonic laughter in the middle of the night was a nuisance, and she ramped up the volume, and night after night came shrieking past the house, her body outlined in blue flame, being dragged screaming behind a huge spectral midnight black horse. Sunderland, like many of his kind, was an alcoholic, and he finally determined 
to venture out to the village tavern for drink. But when he came staggering home, she would be waiting for him, sitting atop a huge white boulder just outside of town, a howling black dog by her side, and she would blow Ralph kisses, yes, kisses, of bluish white fire. The white boulder was eventually christened the Spook Rock. Spook Rock. I'd like to say that Sunderland came to a bad end or was the victim of some type of infernal justice, but I suspect he died peacefully in bed. His kind always does. And as for the girl with the flaming fingers, well, if you should go out to the spook rock late at night, perhaps you'll meet a woman in white and get a kiss of fire. C.B. Colby advises storytellers that they may provide the ghost girl with a pillow to sit on for her comfort and convenience. And so we shall. Ralph was creeping his way back home along a quiet back road. He'd had a few, a few too many, but he figured he could make it back okay as long as he could avoid the cops. Ralph wasn't aware of the girl in the middle of the road until he hit her. He felt the bump as his tires ran over her body. Ralph slammed on the brakes, then staggered back to where a young woman's body lay sprawled across the road. She had been pretty once. She appeared to have been dressed in night clothes, clothes which had been white, but which were now torn and bloody and covered with tire tracks. Ralph took a quick look around. There didn't seem to be anyone around, any other traffic. Hey, they were in the middle of nowhere, eh? He quickly checked the front of his car, but could see no apparent damage. So he got behind the wheel again and drove away. There was nothing he could do for the girl, he told himself. She was dead. But Ralph hadn't gone far when he heard the laughter. Looking in his rear-view mirror, Ralph was shocked to see he was being chased by a huge midnight black horse, a midnight black horse dragging something white behind it, something that laughed and shrieked and gibbered. It, it was a young woman. Was it the young woman he had killed? Ralph slammed his foot down on the accelerator, going way faster than he wanted to go, but he had to get away from her get away but the horse the the dead girl seemed to be catching up to him catching up and then they suddenly vanished ralph wasn't sure how he made it back home but he did and he was so shaky he had to take another drink a double he passed out onto his bed still fully dressed Something woke him in the middle of the night. Ralph looked up to see a young woman in a torn and dirty nightie, staring down at him, an arch smile on her bloody face. And then she raised her hands to him, and from the tips of each of her fingers shot jets of bluish-white flame. He just had time to scream once, before the fire enveloped him.
Next day, local media reported the mysterious death of Ralph Sunderland IV, killed by a fire in his bedroom. The authorities blamed it on smoking in bed, but we know the real reason, don't we? The moral of the story? Don't drink and drive. Don't smoke in bed. And avoid midnight encounters with old flames. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. My name is Warren, and I write and tell original ghost stories and original horror stories featuring such cryptids as the night floaters, werewolves, and the black-eyed children. Please help me to reach my goal of 2,021 subs in 2021. Till midnight. Cheers. Today's story was based on The Girl with the Flaming Fingers by C.B. Colby from his collection The Weirdest People in the World. Images used in today's video were provided by Pixhere, PX here, while the music was haunted by screams by the wonderfully talented Mayu.